What about Icona Valley that strikes an uneasiness and fear within the player? It's fair to say that the music to Icona Valley is one of the most unnerving music pieces in video game history. This music design episode will seek to uncover the magic of Koji Kondo and how he perfectly captured the bleak atmosphere of Majora's Mask. The context behind the music of Icona Valley comes from the environment itself. The color palette is dark brown, tan, and a pale green. The valley has more space than any other environment in the game, which helps reverberate any sound that emits in these open caverns. Lastly, the whole place has a sense of ancient evil that has been long since buried. This is the world that Koji Kondo will build this tune from. Icona Valley along with the rest of the overworld music is set at a slow 60 beats per minute. Why not have it at a faster tempo? Well despite the time mechanic of Majora's Mask, the game is actually a bit slower paced than most Zelda titles, especially in these overworld settings. This game allows the players to slow down and take in the great work the level designers created for the environments. All the overworld themes in Majora's Mask are the same tempo, time signature, and melodic content. However, Kondo brilliantly makes each of them stand out in their own unique way and their own different mood. Southern Swamp is mysterious and quirky. Snow Mountain is oppressive and distant. Great Bay Coast is depressing and sad. And Icona Valley is creepy and distressing. What makes up the instruments to Icona Valley? Ambient sounds and various sound effects begin the piece and pervade throughout the entire song. Actual instruments beginning with the extremely low piano and eventually with the choir and the piccolo join in. Then section 2 will introduce us to two new instruments, the synth pad and the voice. Icona Valley opens to a fade in of the ambience. Koji makes a unique choice to pan the ambience all the way to the left, despite it containing a lot of low end frequencies. Most people are not used to hearing bass in only one ear, so this sets the listener more on edge already. How I created this ambience was combining around four different sounds together until I got something that sounded close to the original. Then I used the low pass filter to focus on the low end. To go along with the ambience, I included another synth instrument that slowly pulsates up and down every measure. Down here you can see the automation curve that adjusts the pitch over time. Our next more ambient sounds are these shimmer sounds. These are sped up and pitched up to sound very close to the original song. To me they sound like something that is reverberating in the Icona Valley itself and perhaps not part of the song. Still they contribute in by filling in some of the space in this intro section. If we continue to look at the other sound effects we have here, this next one is one of those instantly recognizable sounds. It sounds like the original sound was put through a crystallizer and then reversed. Fortunately, this exact sound is actually found in Omnisphere by the name of either Pixies or Elves. This next sound is an awesome creature-like sound. And then the first section of this song is capped off by two more sound effects of the same nature. Finally, the deep piano plays this incredibly low C note. Due to the piano note being this low, it's actually used more as a textual sound rather than any specific pitch. I do appreciate how Koji introduces each of these defined sounds one by one to slowly ease the listener in to this tune. Let's take a listen to all these instruments in tandem together. Certainly one of the more creepier sections in the Majora's Mask soundtrack, Low Male Choir begins prominently with the overworld melody. What makes this part so disturbing can be looked at at two angles, the melody itself and the choir. For the melody, it makes good use of the tritone interval, such as the G sharp to D, and the 
the F sharp to C. A tritone, which is a minor fifth apart, is one of the most dissonant intervals. Of course, the fact that this melody can be played at such a low octave also contributes to the mood. If you notice, if we try to identify a key signature as I scroll up these notes, it's so difficult to find any scale that matches these notes. That is why I would describe this piece as atonal, no key center, a very bold move by Kondo. The second factor that plays into this disturbing melody is the choir itself. Check out this single choir note. Can you tell what effect it uses? Now if I turn off all the effects, we'll go through these effects one by one. The first effect I use is a tremolo, which pulsates the volume of the choir back and forth. For example, if I increase the amount of tremolo, you can definitely hear the effect. I also added a micro shift, which slightly modulates the pitch. Next, the chorus is added. Then finally, the whole sound is drenched in reverb. Heading to the piano, it continues playing singular piano notes. I actually found it a little difficult to record these notes without them sounding too ambiguous. The way around this is to play the piano a little softer so that it is easier to identify each note. Now let's take a listen to section 1A in full. Section 1B is almost exactly the same as 1A, but adds in this piccolo instrument. The piccolo might seem like a random choice, but Koji Kondo is wise to include it. The reason is, is because of the lack of previous high end in the last section. Because there wasn't a high end instrument before, this new piccolo is easily distinguishable from the other sounds going on. It's also somewhat soft without being too biting. Now look out for the other small details while we listen to this section. Koji completely removes all the instruments besides the ambience and gives us a look at the melancholic side of Akana Valley. This is personally one of my favorite moments in the Majora's Mask soundtrack. Taking a look at the synth pad, the instrument is the same pad we've seen before in my previous episodes, such as Majora's Theme and the Astral Observatory. It just carries this deep, introspective, and melancholic vibe that is integral to much of the Majora's Mask score. This sort of third chord movement reminds me a lot of John Williams' music for Tatooine and Star Wars. In the second half, Koji adds a third voice that simply copies the top note down one octave. He includes this bottom note to further expand this section. For the voice, the original Icona Valley theme uses Romani's voice. However, I use a similar innocent sounding voice with the solo boy voice. Ooh. 
On top of that, I also included a female voice which adds a vibrato element. Together they sound peaceful and serene. Let's finish today's look at Icona Valley with section 2. Thank you for using your time wisely and watching this analysis of Majora's Mask. Yoji Kondo adds yet another memorable and incredible song to his record. Icona Valley demonstrates that Koji is proficient in not only creating the jolly tunes of the Mario series, but also the atmospheric and dark score of Majora's Mask. This song is a great insight into the unusual techniques he uses to write dark music. Thank you to everyone who has supported me and this channel through Patreon. Every comment and encouraging word you share makes a world of difference to me. Thanks, and I hope to see you all in the next episode of Music Design.